If you survive COVID only to have your hair fall out now, well then stay tuned, this video is for you. If you're new here, welcome. My channel's mostly about dealing with hair loss and my own hair loss journey and recovery story. If you dealt with COVID and you survived that and now all your hair is falling out, first of all, I wanna say, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. It must be so devastating, but I'm so glad that you survived and I'm really hoping that you're doing better now but you're probably freaking out because a lot of your hair is coming out and that's how you found me on this video. So what I'm gonna do here is just give you some hair care advice. I'm not gonna like diagnose you or anything like that. Toward the end, I'm just gonna give you like sensible things that you can try, easy products to find at the drugstore to help you with your hair care and to sort of help you deal with the hair loss that you're experiencing. Again, I'm not a physician, I am not a doctor, but I have gone through my own fair share of hair loss. I had no hair three years ago and then and when it did start growing back, I started to lose it again. And the reason that I show this photo that I'm gonna show you right now a lot on this channel is to remind people like you can recover from this and you can go back to somewhat of a normal state. So there's always hope. So just wanted to share that with you. You can come back from this, but I'm just glad mostly that you that you lived. I, uh, and I'm sure you are too. But sometimes when you're losing your hair, that is so devastating that it really makes you rethink everything in your life and not in a good way. So I just hope that you'll stay tuned and I hope that these tips are helpful for you. As Soon as I read that 27% of people recovering from COVID also experienced some sort of hair loss, uh, as soon as I heard that, I decided that really I should make a video to help address it. Not necessarily uh, obviously diagnose like telogen effluvium, which is possibly what's going on there, but just to sort of walk you through some of the things that would be good to know as a fellow person who suffered from hair loss. That is a lot of people, 27% means, as you guys know, 27 people out of 100 that are recovering from the coronavirus are also experiencing hair loss. That is, that's, that's a really high number. And so I'm just going to try and do my best here to give you a hand with that. What they're saying now is that it is probably telogen effluvium, which is a hair loss condition. It's usually triggered by an event that causes excessive hair loss. So not the normal amount of hair that we would lose in the shower, but something happens to you like an illness, a surgery, a really stressful life, events. I've also heard people who have done keto or have had um, bariatric like stomach bypass surgery have also suffered from telogen effluvium where just tons and tons of hair falls out. And you usually know this because I mean a lot, a lot comes out. Like when you are in the shower and you're gathering your hair, it looks like a small animal on your hand. So I'm so sorry if you're dealing with that. I know that it is stressful. I am a freelance writer and longtime journalist. So I've been reading a, up a lot on this to also get myself up to speed so that I can tell you things that are hopefully a, give you an educated perspective on this or at least a well-informed perspective on this and some of the advice that I was seeing says that you know it should be better quote unquote in a couple of months and if not then that's the time to be concerned about this hair loss but I will say that to be honest in my experience with hair loss typically a couple months won't do it your hair does not grow that quickly so if you're new to the whole hair loss world your hair only grows about half an inch a month so let's say it does start to grow in you might see less thin and bald spots but your hair will not be back back to normal in three months because you'd only have a little bit of hair growth. So if you're dealing with a much thinner ponytail, your, your, your ponytail itself is way down here and that's a long time of growth. So that won't be any thicker in three months. You might just notice that the hair loss stops, which would be amazing. Of course, that's the dream that everybody is wishing for. Or maybe you just don't see quite so much scalp, which is the other issue. But I would not say that your hair can go back to normal in three months, just from my own many multi-year experience with hair loss. But you might see it start to look better in the scalp. I think that that makes sense, but I did read another um, article written in the Toronto Star and I'll put a link down below for that so you guys can check that out too. If you want that, is, you have to pay to see it, but if you use the Pocket app, I shouldn't really be sharing this piece of advice, but I will. If you use the Pocket app on your phone, you can usually save stories even if they're, if they're paywall protected. You can read like one story on there. It's usually It usually does work. A doctor there did comment in um, the article that actually kind of kicked off the idea for this video. She did comment that it can be like one to two years before your hair gets back to normal and just based on my own experience that is 
a very normal timeline, so I hate to be the one to break the news to you that unfortunately, if you have lost hair due to recovering, you know, due to COVID, it will probably be a couple year journey for it to be completely back to normal, quote unquote. I'm not saying it won't look, it can't look better between now and then, I think it can, and I'm gonna try and give you some tips to help you get there. But realistically, you know, it's gonna take a couple of years. So I hate to be the portent of bad news, but that is kind of how it is. Another reason I jumped onto this is because two of my Patreon supporters told me that this is a trending topic and a lot of news stories just came out about it in the last couple days. So I just wanted to jump in to see if I could be of help there. Um, oh, and even Dr. Pimple Popper, the wonderful Dr. Sandra Lee, who we've seen, I think her show's on TLC. She pops pimples, but she also, she was also on TikTok. I love TikTok. I'm a bit addicted to TikTok. She also was on TikTok talking a, a little bit about what telogen effluvium is and also talking about how it is just temporary. Although in this quick TikTok that she made, she didn't really talk about the temporary aspect. She just talked about these different phases that your hair goes through, how it can get to the telogen effluvium stage and how that you will see that after a big life event, it does take a couple months for that to start to happen. So I guess, you know, with a lot of stress, even with stress from coronavirus, like quarantine worries that can cause telogen effluvium in people, and she's starting to see that more in her practice. But listen, if you've gone through it, that also probably makes complete sense. It is an illness, and they are saying it, it affects the vascular system. So you know what your head is full of? Your scalp is full of blood vessels. So, I mean, it can completely stand to reason why you would be losing so much hair. So um, take heart, you're not alone, 27%, that's a lot of people. And not to mention just all the other people just dealing with you know, quarantine related telogen effluvium. So a lot of people are losing their hair right now thanks to coronavirus. How do dermatologists diagnose different hair conditions? And this just goes in general. And sometimes you hear people rag on dermatologists, oh, they just quickly looked at my hair or they just quickly asked me a few questions and then they knew and they didn't do a biopsy. Well, I mean, they can do a biopsy and sometimes they will if they're not sure. Often they don't need to take it to that length though. And I think that this is just the missing piece that people don't understand. They take a history from you. So when you start to explain your life events and they can look with their eyes because that's what dermatologists do, after 10 or 15 years of diagnosing people, they're usually pretty confident in their assessment skills. So they will look and they will hear from you maybe that you went through COVID-19, bless your heart. I'm so glad that you survived that to be able to tell them that story. But they'll hear that and they'll, and they'll hear you say, I, I'm losing tons and tons of hair each time I take a shower, every time I brush my my hair like an animal size, like a mouse size amount is coming out, they're gonna hear that and they're gonna know from their vast experience that that sounds like telogen effluvium. Contrary to that, if you've come in and say, yes, my hair is thinning diffusely through here and it's started 10 years ago and every year it seems to be a little bit, you know, more of my scalp is visible then, it's possible just from that or maybe giving you a blood test that they can diagnose female pattern hair loss, which is also called androgenetic alopecia. So just to give you an idea of why sometimes they can give you a pretty quick diagnosis, uh, a lot of these things are based on your storytelling, the, what you tell them about what's going on with you and also just visually them looking at what's going on with you. They don't always need to do a biopsy, but then sometimes they do. But please always seek you know, an opinion from your doctor or your dermatologist. And you know, sometimes people are not completely happy with the opinions that they get, and then they just decide to go in a completely different direction, you know, naturopathy and stuff like that. And I'm not against that. I'm just saying maybe before you do that or a conjunction with doing that, maybe you seek a second opinion because sometimes it's just the fit between you and your doctor or dermatologist I mean, dermatologists are doctors, you know what I mean? But sometimes it's just an issue of the fit or maybe you just, you know, you're not completely trusting their advice and that's fine, you can be skeptical, but I would just say that's why second opinions exist. So definitely I would say seek out a second opinion if you're not feeling confident or there's some gap of knowledge that you feel or information that you feel you're missing. And while I got your attention here, before I hop into the hair care and hair loss advice, like tactics and strategies, if you would kindly like, subscribe, you know, I talk about hair loss on this channel, but if you want to take it a step further, definitely consider supporting me on Patreon. I really rely on that support there to help do this work that I do for the hair loss community. There are so many of us and there are so many scams out there. And so what I'm really committed to doing here is just giving you the straightest talk about how to address hair loss, things that have worked for me and things that might work for you. And also just try and give you some more one-on-one -on -one help. I'm able to do that in the Patreon environment, which is um, $5 a month. So I'll include a link down below to check that out. So without any further ado, let's get into the tips that my best tips for you for dealing with your actual hair loss, covering it up, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna guess just based on what I've lived through and based on what I hear from other women and men, 
The time that your hair loss stresses you out is probably number one in the shower and number two when you're sort of maybe gathering up your hair like this or maybe taking out a ponytail at the end of the day and or brushing your hair. So let's deal with dealing with your hair in the shower and dealing with hair loss in the shower. This is super stressful, I've totally been here. It is a myth though that more showering causes you to lose hair. So don't worry about that at all. If you like to wash your hair every second day, every third day, and you have the strength to do so, by all means, go ahead and do that. And I actually think that in my own experience, it's beneficial because it makes the hair and the scalp feel nice and clean. Your hair is nice and clean, but you just wanna avoid really stripping shampoos. We'll talk about that in a second. And really drying shampoos, we'll also talk about that. Go ahead and condition your hair. You don't need to change your hair routine, but I will say though, if you're only doing it once a week, you probably want to actually wash your hair a bit more frequently. If you're washing your hair every once a week, it's normal to lose 50 to 100 strands of hair every single day. So by the time you get to a week, that's 700 strands of hair on top of the telogen effluvium hair that might be coming out. So that could be an awful lot of hair. And so that could be causing you stress right there. So you probably will see less hair falling out if you wash your hair more frequently. My other tip when it comes to washing your hair is just use a lot less shampoo. We need to move beyond what I like to call the Timothée era here on my channel back when you were expected to build up this huge lather. You don't need to do that. You don't need so much lather. Really dial back the amount of shampoo you're using. You know, two dime size amounts go in there with a the first shampoo, two dime size amounts go in there with a the second shampoo, and then be sure to condition. And when you're conditioned, when you're conditioning, squish in your conditioner. Don't rake it because that's you will get a lot of hair loss when you do that. I'm not saying extra hair falls out, but something about the act of raking when you have conditioner attaches every single hair onto your hand and then you spend half your time just trying to get it off your hand so you can give yourself a nice conditioning moment. Don't do that. Just start squishing it in. So just rub the conditioner between your your palms like this and then just start pushing it in like this and actually just spend a couple uh, moments just pushing it into the strands instead of just like raking through all your hair. Trust me, I have a lot of experience doing this and I've heard back from a lot of women with longer hair and they say that this tip really helps to reduce the amount of hair they're seeing in the shower. The hair still might be falling out, but less of it will be coming out during the actual showering, hair washing and conditioning moments, if you know what I'm trying to say there. So telogen effluvium is supposed, or telogen effluvium is supposed to be a temporary condition when it happens due to illness. So that's the good news. But the bad news is if you're brand new to this whole hair loss world, you probably haven't the faintest clue about where to start with products and stuff like that, how to look better, how to get your confidence back. I My channel is full of videos that could help you out. So definitely have a look at those. But I'm just gonna give you some quick tips for people that are complete beginners to this world. And these are all things that you can get. These first things I'm gonna talk about are all things you can get at the drugstore. First of all, you're gonna be wondering if you should use a thickening shampoo or an anti-thinning shampoo. A lot of people have heard of Nioxin. This is a really well-known uh, shampoo that's supposed to target hair loss. I have used it and I've made a review. It may or may not be up by the time that this video goes up. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly nice shampoo. It doesn't do anything to address actual hair loss though. Just so you know, shampoos don't address hair loss, generally speaking, and any of the good ones do not make any claims that they do fix hair loss. Even this one, which is known for hair loss, doesn't make any such claims on its packaging. If you don't believe me, have a look at the Nioxin website. It just says that it helps to give thicker, uh, fuller looking hair because shampoo does not address hair loss. I hate to be the one to tell you that. It just doesn't. Uh, this is a nice shampoo. It gives you a very pepperminty kind of a vibe. It's very, I wanna say clarifying. It's not super clarifying. I've done a review on mane and tail shampoo. Those are very clarifying. They're great if you have very oily hair, but I think that you might find them too drying. This one is fine. My favorite one actually, and the thing that I recommend to people is go for a moisturizing shampoo. This is my favorite, like my holy grail. This is an expensive shampoo though. You don't need this. Suge I, what I suggest is go to the drugstore and get your favorite. What is your favorite brand? Is your favorite brand Dove or Pantene? Have a look for their moisturizing or hydrating shampoos and just give that one a try and wash your hair a bit more frequently because I think some of us think that we're gonna use these thickening shampoos and it's gonna help and they can. They can make your hair more fluffy looking but they also have a tendency to dry it out which is not really necessarily what you need right now. Very often hair just looks better when it has a bit more moisture in it. Hair is dead, right? This hair down here is like rope, it's dead. So what do you think is gonna make rope look better? Is it gonna be something that really dries the rope out or something that is gonna give it a sheen and some moisture? Probably the moisturizing thing. So that's why I suggest going for a moisturizing 
or hydrating shampoo. Doesn't have to be this one, but if you're curious about this one, I will have a link down below in the description box as well. If you want your hair to just look thicker, like you have visible scalp issues, I talk a lot about that on my channel, but just very briefly, two products you could pick up and try at the grocery, sorry, at the drugstore. This L'Oreal Magic Root Cover-Up Spray it gives a tiny bit of texture to your hair, but what it does is it you spray it in and it kind of covers up your roots. So if you have your roots growing in, if you have gray hair showing, I don't have too much gray hair, it will cover that up, but also will cover up visible scalp as well. So if you're finding that this is really see-through looking, this will definitely do the trick. And then the number one thing that people love also available at the Jug Store is Topic, which is a type of hair fiber, which people that are new to the hair loss community have typically not heard of, but the rest of us have known about this for a long time, baby. These are keratin fibers and you just tap them into your hair and what they do, my hair is actually very full right now, I've recovered from hair loss, but what you can do is you just sort of tip them into any visible spots and they really just darken it and it is just a product that just stays on the top of your scalp. It is just little dark, tiny fibers and they just stick there and then you could use a bit of hairspray to kind of lock them in. Those products work well, but again, check out all the different videos that I have. It's so much stuff here. I've been making videos for years now about hair loss, so I've covered it all. You know, if your doctor talks to you about Rogaine or Minoxidil as well, that's something that I'm actually really well known for on this channel, so go ahead and check those out as well. Even down to whether you should buy men's Rogaine or women's Rogaine, I use men's Rogaine and I have videos about that so be sure to check that out. And if, if, if those things are not enough and you need to take it to the next levels, well, listen, don't be embarrassed. People wear helper hair, alternative hair, hair extensions. It's very common right now. You know, you look at your Ariana Grandes of the world. You have young pop stars like this openly talking about using hair extensions. Like nobody hides it anymore. So, and you shouldn't feel embarrassed either. There is something called a topper. I talk about this here too, which is just a small wig that just covers your sort of thin areas up here. Almost like, I don't want to say two pegs. That sounds so cheesy, but they look really good. They look really, really nice. They look, you know, I, I, had I discovered toppers when I started to lose hair, I might not have done any of this. This, this whole video might, this whole channel might not exist because I would have just used toppers and I never would have worried about it, but I only kind of discovered them a little bit later on. People tend to be really happy with the way that they look and they cover up any sort of thinning areas and just make you look like a Hollywood star. Uh, if you're not into that at all, or if your hair loss is just an issue where you want more fullness in your ponytail, consider clip-in extensions. You know, these are affordable. You can get them from uh, your beauty supply store. You can get them from Amazon. Lots of different places have clip-in extensions to make your hair look thicker, and they're obviously a temporary solution. And if that's not for you, there's also halo extensions where it's just like on a string. It's like a string with a um, hair attached to the bottom of it, and you just wear it almost like a headband, and it really gives you so much thickness on the back. I don't use any of those things because I'm lucky to say that I've recovered from hair loss at this point. That's not to say that my hair won't start falling out again because it can be unfortunately a bit of a cyclical journey for some of us dealing with this. But I just hope that all that was helpful and you found some tips and tricks here. Most of all, I'm just so happy that you're here to even watch this video. You know, I'm sure that you are terrified and maybe are still scared and you're still going through this and maybe you're even dealing with symptoms on the long haul. I'm so very glad that you chose to spend your time here and you trusted me and you watched this video. I hope you'll stay tuned for more of this sort of hair loss content that I do. We'll see you soon.